Have you ever wondered how Magic Johnson really got to the Lakers? Sure, you may remember he got drafted on June 25th, 1979, but do you know how they came upon that number one draft pick? Let's go back a few years to the summer of 1976. It was America's bicentennial, and Gail Fitterich was the second leading scorer on the team behind the big fella, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You may even remember a certain announcer playing on that team as well. Goodrich had held out in the beginning of that year, upset with his contract and his diminished scoring role. So he opted out of his contract to sign as a free agent with the New Orleans Jazz. That's right, before they were in Utah, they played in the birthplace of American Jazz. You don't think the Mormons in Utah were grooving to Louis Armstrong, do you? Back in the 70s, when a team signed a player as a free agent, they were required to give the original team some compensation. So here's what they agreed on. In exchange for signing Goodrich, they'd also get the Lakers' second round pick in 1977 and their first round pick in 78. In return, the Lakers would get the Jazz's first round picks in 77, 78, and 79, as well as a second round pick in 1980. Let's look at who those draft picks turned out to be. The Jazz took Essie Hollins with the second round pick in 77. He fizzled out almost immediately. They traded their 78 first round pick, who turned out to be Jack Gibbons, for Joe Merriweather, who they traded for Spencer Haywood. Haywood did well for 34 games before the Jazz traded him for Adrian Dantley. Dantley was an all-star for the Jazz, playing seven great seasons and leading the league in scoring twice. The Jazz were able to trade him for two second round picks, Kent Benson and Kelly Tripuka. They then turned Del Curry and Kent Benson into Daryl Dawkins and dinner bell Mel Turpin while they traded Tripuka for Mike Brown. Not the coach Mike Brown, but the 6'10 center with no neck. In 93, they traded Brown for Felton Spencer, and then a few years later, turned Spencer into Kenny Gaddison, Brooks Thompson, and a 1999 first round draft pick named Andre Kirilenko, who became an all-star and defensive first teamer. And what did the Lakers get? That 77 first rounder was Kenny Carr, who they traded for a 1980 second round pick, Wayne Robinson, whom they traded for a 1981 second round pick with one of the best names of all time, Harvey Knuckles. He didn't pan out. They dealt their 78 first round pick with John Chaney and Kermit Washington for Charlie Scott, and this stemmed from the Rudy Tomjanovich punch incident. The Lakers then traded Charlie Scott for Ron Boone and turned him into an 81 third round pick, which became Zam Frederick. Another great name, bad game kind of player. The Lakers packaged their 1980 second round pick, who became Sam Worthen, with Ollie Mack and a 1981 second rounder, who became Gene Banks, for Mark Landsberger. Yes, that Mark Landsberger, the first guy posterized by Dr. J in the 1980 finals. And of course, with the Jazz's first round pick of 79, they had to flip a coin to see if they picked first overall. The reason the Jazz tanked so badly in the preceding season was because Gail Goodrich and Pistol Pete never got a chance to play with each other much. First, Goodrich got injured his first year and never made it back to his big scoring days. And Pistol Pete steadily declined as his body broke down, playing in fewer and fewer games each season. The Jazz ended up the worst team in the East, while the Bulls were the worst in the West. On a flip of the coin, the Lakers drafted Irvin Magic Johnson and the Bulls got David Greenwood. Passing up Bill Cartwright, Sidney Moncrief, Vinnie Johnson, and Jim Paxson. In an even more bizarre twist of fate, do you know who coached the Jazz to that awful record? That's right, former Laker great Elgin Baylor, essentially giving his former team the first pick in the draft. Things that make you go, hmm. Which leads one to wonder, what would have happened if the Bulls had won that flip? Would they have wallowed in mediocrity for the next five years? Probably not, which means they wouldn't have been in position to draft a certain someone in the 1984 draft.